Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about navigation drawer, which is kind of a slider menu, which is used in very many apps. So you can either click on a toggle button to open it up or close it, or you can simply swipe from the left to the right to open it up. First, we want to make sure that we included the Google material design dependency. So we open up our build.gradle module app file and then make sure that you have this line in here in your dependencies block. If not, then just write it off and click on sync now and then we are good to go. So then we go back into our activity main.xml file and we will start by creating our layout. And as you can see, our root layout here is a constraint layout, but for a navigation drawer, this won't work because every time we want to use a navigation drawer, we have to use a draw layout as our root layout. So let's replace this constraint layout with a drawer layout. And I will give it an ID of draw layout. And this draw layout should only contain two different views, one for the activity or fragment and one for the navigation view. So let's start by creating a constraint layout here for the activity views. And I will set the width to match parent and the height to. And then we can simply open that tag up and I will just paste a text view here just for simplicity that we that I show you how to actually um, insert views into that activity and still have that navigation drawer. I will set the width of that text view to web content and the height to. I will set the text to activity, the text size to 40 SP. Then we can close the tag off, go into our activity layout, take our text view and constrain it horizontally in parent and vertically in parent. Then we go back to the XML code. And now we need to go below our constraint layout. And here we want to create a navigation view. So that navigation view is just the the view that slides in our activity when we click on that toggle button or um, when we swipe from the left to the right. I will set the width to wrap content and the height to match parent. Then we want to have a header layout for that navigation view. So every navigation view, or not every, every navigation view, but we can use a header for our navigation view, which is just a space on top of our navigation view and we can fill it with other views. We will create that header layout in a sec. So after we finish that activity layout here and we, we do that by writing header layout. And here we have to provide a layout file for our header, which we don't have yet. So I will just write add layout um, nav header. So of course this doesn't exist, but this is how I want to call it. Next is we want to set the menu for our navigation view. So we write menu. These are the menu items that we are able to select later on. So our menu doesn't exist either. So let's write add menu, um, nav header menu, which we will also create afterwards. Then we need to set the layout gravity of our navigation view to start because if we wouldn't do that, our navigation view would just overlap our whole activity and we want it to be outside of the activity um, by default. So let's write layout gravity. And I think, yeah, I had that problem before it, the suggestion doesn't work here, but we can just write Android layout gravity, even though Android Studio doesn't know it, we can still use it and set it to start. It will work. And finally, we want to set fit system windows to true, which just means that the navigation drawer will leave space for system windows such as the status bar. And finally, we can close that navigation view off and that's it for our activity layout. Next, we want to actually create that nav header layout file. So the layout file that um, has all the views in it that we want to have in our navigation view header. To do that, let's go into our layout folder right click new layout resource file and name it exactly like we did it in our xml code nav header leave as root element the constraint layout that's fine 
click OK. And actually, I don't want to put any views in this uh, in it in this tutorial. I just want to change its background color to color primary, just to recognize later on which part of our navigation drawer is the header. And I also want to change the layout height of it to 150 dp. And that's actually it for our nav header. We can remove this closing tag here and replace it with this shorter tag. And then we can go to our REST folder again, right click new Android resource file. And this time make sure that you select menu as resource type and call it nav um, draw menu, I think. Let's see how I call it in activity main. Oh, I call it nav header menu. That's actually not how I wanted to call it. Let's call it nav drawer menu here. And then we are fine to go. Go back into our nav drawer, nav drawer menu. And here we can create our menu items that we want to have in our navigation drawer. So we open the tag, write item. I'll give it an ID of mi item one and set the title to item one. Close that tag off. You could also give it an icon, but I won't do this here. Just copy this item, paste it two times below just for demonstration. Rename the ID to MI item 2 and item 2, item 3, and MI item 3. So that's actually it for our navigation drawer menu. The rest needs to be done in our main activity, so let's open that up. And here we need to create what is called an action bar drawer toggle and that is simply used to have that toggle button in the toolbar to be able to open and close the drawer by simply clicking. And we still we will still be able to open the drawer by um, swiping from the left to the right but that toggle button is very useful to open it up by clicking. So for that I want to create a late init var. Um, toggle and this is an action bar drawer toggle and if you don't know what this late init var means that is just um, basically a promise that we will initialize this variable later on so we don't have to give it a value right here because we need this toggle variable to be global we don't want to define this in on create because we will need it in another function um, later on so we just tell Kotlin that we will initialize this one later and we still don't want to have a nullable type here. So we could also be we, we could also use var toggle is an action var draw toggle that is nullable and set it to null initially. But then we always have to do these null checks and we don't want that. We know that we will initialize it so we can just use a late init var. Then we go into our own create and the first thing we do here is to actually initialize this toggle. So we write toggle is equal to action by draw toggle. And this action by draw toggle takes as a first parameter our activity, which is just this. Second parameter is our draw layout, which we also called draw layout. And then we need to provide two string resources for opening and closing the, um, the navigation drawer. And these string resources are just used, for example, um, if blind people use your app, then the string that we provide here will be read out loud when they open or close the drawer. So we just have to create two string resources here. And we'll just call these r.string.open and r.string.close. And of course, we have to create them. So we go into our res folder values strings.xml and create a string here um, open which just says open press ctrl d to duplicate that line name it close and write close here then we can go back into our activity and here we need to add that toggle to our draw layout so let's write draw layout um, draw layout dot add draw listener and here we can just pass our toggle and after we have um, basically connected this toggle with our draw layout we have to, to tell our toggle that it should sync its state so we do that by toggle dot sync state 
So that just means that um, we tell our toggle that it's now ready to be used. Then we need to do one more thing, which is overriding on options item selected. And we need to do that to respond correctly to clicks on our toggle button and to respond to clicks on the menu items in our navigation drawer. If we don't do this, then nothing, nothing will work. We won't be able to open our drawer by clicking on the toggle button. So you actually always have to write the same code here when you use a navigation drawer. So let's write if toggle, and that is actually why we need this toggle to be global to access it in our on create function and in our on options item selected function. Um, so if toggle dot on options item selected and then pass this menu item here, so this item, if that is the case, then we simply want to return true in this function. So then we know that the user clicked on that toggle button and then we need to return true in this um, on options item selected function. So now we want to go back into our on create function and call support action bar. Make sure to make that null check here. And we want to call set display home as up enabled to true. So what that means is that we just that we're just able to open our toggle and when it's opened that toggle button we um, moves to a back arrow and we can click on that back arrow and the navigation drawer will close again. So that actually is enough to be able to open and close our drawer. But I also want to show you how to respond to uh, menu item clicks. So let's quickly do that. For that, we need to add a navigation item selected listener to our navigation view. And I think I forgot to give it an ID. So let's go back into our activity main XML file um, to our navigation view and give it an ID of nav view. Then go back to our main activity, write nav view dot set navigation item selected listener. And here we can use a ran expression. So when it dot item ID, it is just the current menu item that was clicked on. And we want to respond to the ID of that item because we gave it IDs in our menu resource file. So in case we clicked on r.id.miitem1, then we just want to show a toast here, toast.make text. Here we can just pass application context as text um, clicked item one, toast.length short and call.show on it. And I will move it to two lines. Then we can copy that line, paste it two times below for our other items. Make sure to rename this to MI item two and MI item three. This one too. Oops. And make sure to go below of your um, when expression and write true. So that just means that we return out of this um, Lambda expression and returning true means we handled the click. And that's it. We can just start our app now and let's see what happens. So as you can see, here's our text view that says activity. So we just have a normal activity layout here and we have that toggle button in the top left corner here. If we click on it, then our navigation drawer will open. Here you can see is our navigation header. So you could also put any views in it and make it even um, higher. So set the height to more dp. And we have our three menu items, which you can also extend to more menu items, of course. And if we click on them, it says clicked item two, clicked item, uh, clicked item one, clicked item two, and clicked item three. And we can just slide this draw in and we can slide it out again, which is kind of difficult in the emulator. But yeah, as you can see, the icon in the top left turned to an arrow to go back. And if we click on it, it will switch to that hamburger icon again. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there is anything I can improve on, please tell me in the comments. That would be really helpful for me. See you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.